I know I've been MIA for the past month, I've been super busy sorting the new pad out, but today is a very, very, very good day. Remember Tom, the lad who had the ever so slightly modified Focus RS? Well, he's got himself a new toy, and you already know what it is because you clicked on the video. It's the Yaris GR, and my god, what a machine. But what's twice as good as one GR? Well, two of them, obviously. No messing about today, let's get straight into it. I know I've missed the hype train to get a video out for these little beasts, but believe me, it wasn't from the lack of trying. The local dealerships around here just can't get the stock, and whatever does turn up doesn't stay around for long. Both these guys got super lucky. It was purely a case of being in the right place at the right time, because there's a monumental waiting list for them at the moment. Scott and Tom visited different dealerships on different dates, and both managed to pick up a cancelled order that was in the dealership waiting to be collected that day, bypassing that dreaded year-long wait. I mean, they only had the intention of putting a deposit down on one, but when they were offered the chance to take one home there and then, I think they needed all of about three seconds to decide. And I'm here to play devil's advocate a little bit to see whether or not they made the right choice. I'm sure you'll have watched loads of videos about these things by now, so I won't bore you with all of the facts, I'll just run you through the basic things that you need to know. So, it's a homologation special, meaning that it's basically been made so Toyota could compete in the WRC. That means it automatically falls into the same category as some absolute legends like the Ford RS200 and the Lancia Stratos. But as much as I'd like to watch it bounding through the Welsh Valleys, we aren't actually going to see it race for, well, reasons. That's another video entirely. The tuned 1.6 litre turbo 3 pot under the bonnet produces anywhere between 260 to 280 brake depending on where you get it dynoed, and around 360 newton metres of torque. They weigh in at 1,280 kilograms, so they're pretty light compared to other hot hatches out there at the moment. And because of the limited slip differentials that you get fitted front and rear, and the all-wheel drive system, they launch really well. Just over 5 seconds for its 0-60. Both of these cars have the optional £3,500 circuit pack fitted, meaning that you get those Torsen LSDs front and rear, a set of 18-inch forged BBS wheels with Michelin PS4S's wrapped around them, red calipers which give you an extra 10 brake horsepower straight off the bat, and the GR circuit suspension which is just better than the standard setup, I'm not going to bore you with the details why. What were my first impressions after seeing them in the flesh then? Well, I think it looks absolutely stunning. Red was actually Tom's least favourite colour, but because he's an eager beaver and he didn't want to wait around for 12 months with his thumb up his ass, he decided to bite the bullet and go for the one in the dealership. Scott's pearl white is unbelievable as well, especially in the sun. But after personally owning two pearl cars in the past, I know how much of a headache it can give you trying to match the paint when things do eventually go wrong. But whatever colour you decide to go for, I think it suits the style of it really well. The front end has such a presence in your rear view mirror. It looks a hell of a lot wider than it actually is, purely because the Yaris, which this is kind of based on, is so skinny to begin with. The back end tends to split people's opinions a little bit more down the middle. Again, I'm quite a big fan of it. I like how over the top the flared arches look and the sweeping lines of the rear lights give just enough detail while still maintaining a clean, minimalist kind of look. It's not all rainbows and fairy dust though, there is one angle that I don't like the look of it from and that's from directly side on. I can't really put my finger on why though, the proportions just seem a little bit off to me. Inside it's set up like your typical Japanese hatchback, plastic absolutely everywhere, but you know, it feels solid. There's touches of Alcantara in places, and there's actually loads of room in the cabin. You aren't sat with your nose pressed up against the windscreen, and the infotainment system is really impressive. Because the roof is slightly lower than the standard Yaris though, the visibility isn't the best. Looking out the back is reminiscent of an old school Lambo, and even though that infotainment screen is nice and big for you to see the sat nav, it does create a bit of a letterbox effect because it's so close to the rear view mirror. If you suffer from vertigo, you might want to pop a sick bag in the glove box as well, because the seating position is ridiculously high for a sporty hatch. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can really do about it without buying new seats, because the originals sit on some comically large cone-shaped risers. Cheers for the pictures, Tom. I forgot to record that bit, didn't I? Divvy. There's no getting around it, the GR isn't expensive for a Yaris, it's expensive for a car full stop. You're talking £35,000 retail for one with this spec, and some are selling of upwards of 38k second hand, which is utter madness. But can the driving experience, which is what these cars are meant to be all about, actually make up for it? One word. Yes. Now call me crazy, but just let me try and explain. 
The Yaris wasn't built to go fast in a straight line. If it was, they would have stuck the B58 in one rather than the 1.63 pot. But because it's so lightweight, it does still shift. It doesn't matter what revs you're at, stamp your foot on the right hand pedal and it'll be off. Yeah, it's not as quick as a Type R in a straight line, but it's a proper torquey little engine. When you get to the bends though, that's where this thing comes to life. The circuit pack lets you play around with loads of different settings for your diffs, but track mode is the only one that I've personally experienced, so I'll best talk you through it. Not that there's much to say, it's just 50-50 power through the front and rear, and a ton of grip. I've genuinely not been in anything that is more suited to a British B-Road than this. It's like Akio Toyoda had the North Yorkshire mirrors in his mind when he decided to make it. You can hit 90 degree bends at 50-60 mile an hour and not even break traction. Off camber, over bumps, under hard braking or acceleration, there just doesn't seem to be a way of losing control in this thing. Do not take my word for it, there's always a limit and I can imagine someone wrapping one of these around a tree and saying, oh well Luke said you can't crush these things, and then filing a lawsuit against me. It is possible, it's just hard. Chris Harris can get one sideways but he's definitely a better driver than Tom. Sorry Tom. I do like it how they've only gave you the option of getting a manual box though, which is a bit rich coming from the auto boy, but it is so much more immersive. And when you put the rev matching on, the downshifts are seamless. With it being Japanese though, you can hear every little stone flicking up at that exposed chassis. It just makes you cringe. That's just a trait that every Jap car has unfortunately. Not even the artificial noise getting pumped into the cab is enough to drown it out and there's absolutely zero noise that comes out of the back end, as we found out when we did a bit of a rev test. <laughs> <laughs> Quite bad that innit, it's in dire need of an exhaust. Hey Litchfield, do you want to fit one of my mate's car for let's say 15 grand? Now I know I'm going to have a load of people saying no matter how good it is, it's still just the Yaris. But it really isn't is it? It shares its name, headlights and door mirrors with one but literally everything else is completely bespoke for the GR. And I absolutely adore this little thing, it's an engineering marvel. I've been asked a few times whether or not I'd swap the 140 for one. Of course I would, but realistically I wouldn't just be swapping it would I? I'd have to give them another 20 grand as well and that's what puts me and probably a lot more people off too. If they were the same price I'd dare to say that the majority of people would be tempted to make the jump, but they're just too much at the moment. When you think about what you can get for the equivalent amount of money, there are a lot of options. The M2, Cayman, Lotuses, the list goes on. Is it the best handling car that I've ever been in? Yeah, I genuinely think it is. I don't think a supercar would touch it on your average twisty country lane. M2's a two tail happy to keep up with it and the Focus RS which is probably its main competition right now has far too harsh a ride to keep up with this little thing. The setup is out of this world and the roads in England are just too bumpy for anything with an exotic name to keep up with it. Safe to say I'm a massive fan of it. The pros massively outweigh the cons, it's just a shame that one of the cons is that stupid price tag. But in a world where an M3 can cost nearly a hundred grand by the time you've spec'd it up, maybe the little GR is a real bargain. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching, I had an absolute blast getting back on the saddle making videos again because of this little thing, and there are plenty more to come now that we're in the new house and we've actually got a bit of free time again. Sorry if the quality wasn't as good as usual, you can see the amazing setup that I've got on screen now. Like, comment and subscribe, all of that good stuff if you want to help me out, it helps more than you think. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one, which won't be seven weeks away, hopefully. Bye!